growing trees down the yard. Let's talk about this zero turn for a minute. In a previous video, I told you I was going to have to get somebody else to look at it. Because I wasn't sure what was wrong with it. And I didn't have the time. Well, we dropped it off at the repair shop. Told him it was running on one cylinder. Told him it was running alright last year. So they call me back after two or three weeks and all they tell me that a mouse got up in the engine and chewed the spark plug wire in half and that it was going to need head gaskets and the starter and all this other stuff. Well. When the mower was working perfectly fine last year when I parked it, it should have been working perfectly fine when I started it back up. Head gaskets wouldn't have blowed out over the winter time. So, they quoted me $1,900 to fix this lawnmower. And I told them they were full of shit. Because there's no reason why I need hit new head gaskets when the motor was working perfectly fine. So I told them to fix the ignition, cool, and the starter. And they did. Um, we paid considerably less. I think it was like $600. On something I could have probably done myself for like a fraction of that cost if I'd have sat down and took the time to do it but I didn't have the time so you live and you learn always question the repairs always question the work Always check up after everyone. Because. Sure they would have fixed it. I'd have spent three times what it was worth. The whole lawnmower. Didn't cost me two thousand dollars. So. Just my. Thought of the day. Thought I would catch you up on it. Catch you later.
he saw me spreading some gravel in his spot. He's trying to fill in this giant mud hole. Now, we got all this old broken up asphalt in here, so it don't ride so smooth, but you ain't driving through the mud every time you come over here now. It sure does look better over here after you mow. Alrighty, we gonna put some we gotta put the fuel oil filters on here. Dad's been working on this, getting it ready to go. Dad has trouble with this part. Taking the old one out, putting the new one in. And I'll admit sometimes these O-rings can be a pain in the butt. But Dad always has trouble with them. Most time he don't even change them. He just sticks a new one up on there. Goes along with it. But I'm gonna move my finger at the camera there. They're not hard to do. You just gotta get them in place. Just get them in place. Now I've got a few O-rings over the years that were just a royal pain to get in and out. Sorry, it's dark over here. It's about 7.30 now. Going on 8 o'clock. Take them out, put new ones in. Alright, y'all saw the one. I'll, I'll wait for the second. Okay, this is the fun part. You gotta get them in there. You gotta screw it on. And you gotta get it up there. And then you gotta get it straight. You see that part number right there? It says 407 on it. That is a new canister that we bought through uh, Allstate Tractor Parts because the old canister, let me grab this one. The, the end of it got crushed from over tightening. Um, it happens. Okay, so you saw that part. We need to find a better method of uh, doing all this. So then you get your wrench and you put it on there and you crank it up. And then you gotta make sure you get it right just before it contacts the rubber. This part here is always time consuming. Alrighty. Okay. Lesson one. Remove bucket of black motor oil before putting filter on. When you drop the ratchet, it goes right into the bucket. And I'm I'm just telling you this because now you know where my ratchet is. So I'm going to get a different wrench to finish this up because I, I don't feel like sticking my hand in that bucket right now. All right. Okay, we got a different wrench. This is the wrench that I like to use when use when putting these filters on. It's flat, it's ratcheting, works good. You know, 